In this video, we're going to be reviewing market balance days. And what we're going to do is walk through a few charts here on the NICE and SPY. Uh, we're going to look at what a balance day looks like compared to a strong day. And then I'm going to show you an excerpt from a live stream that we did on June 27th, right in the middle of the day, where we noticed via market internals that we had a balance day. And that really guided our expectations for price action and give us a perspective on how to place our entries and really rein in our expectations for the significance of high level or low level breaks. So range days typically tend to just range back and forth. So that can really influence trade setup concepts. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a look at NICE, and this is where we're going to spend our time today. And we're going to look at a few different things. We're going to look at UVOL, DVOL, we're going to look at ADD, tick, and then finally price action. So in each of these charts here, we have a strong day and a weak day. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see exactly what the strong versus weak day looks like. So here we go. Over here we have June 24th. And then we've got June 27th, so a Friday and then a Monday. So first I want to start with our SPY price. As we can see, June 24th, we had a strong open. We saw a significant bull push. We had ourselves a little beautiful two minute, five minute bull flag, a perfect execution. And then we saw a little bit of a wedge, a complete lack of a bear action on that. And then we saw the bulls push significantly up at the end of the day, carrying that confidence forward. So this is a uh, bullish constructive day. Clearly, there was one side in control almost all of the time, and that really reflected in our overall movement for the day. Now, I want to compare that to the action on June 27th. Here we have an open, we have our low, we have our a five minute lower high, we end up getting these higher highs with any follow through, we get a wedge, we get a bear break, and we just sort of dawdle around and ultimately not too much happens. It, it's a moment of balance. And when we look at the daily chart here, maybe we'll get there. Uh, we can see that the price really has a significant push up and it sort of just lofts here. And it's like that moment when you throw a ball up and it just stops moving right before it comes falling right back down, which is what is happening currently in the market at uh, 12 o'clock Eastern on June 28th. We can see that little action coming in here. Nice, beautiful bear trend. So let's go through our internals. Uh, first, we're going to start over here with our Vol D. And what I want to do is compare again in greater detail the difference between a strong bull day, as we see here, and a range day. So this chart really shows you, essentially, uh, bulls versus bears, who has the most volume. It is up volume in the market minus down volume. So when we see that we have, after that exchange, that calculation, that there's one side with significant strength, we call this lift, and it is a just a complete dominance by the bulls uh, there is far more buying occurring than there is selling, and you see this pressure, and this upside pressure is what supports the price action. So when we have a bearish attack on our price action that is colliding with a significant upside lift, it is like it is being supported by a column of air, that's how I like to imagine it, and we see the price just unable to get through that upward momentum. So this is an, a great example of a constructive day. In contrast, our balance day opens relatively flat. So this zero line is the demarcation between bull volume and bear volume. Who's winning overall? Now, even though we are technically uh, above zero for most of the day, we're really flat. So we're not seeing consecutive and compiling efforts on the part of the bulls like we did on June 24th. Instead, we're seeing just a slow day where no one is really in control. And it's like, for every one share being sold, uh, there's 1.2 shares being purchased, which gives us just a titch of bullish uh, lenience. Um, and, you know, we go back and forth. We don't build anything here. We don't have a trajectory. So when we're looking at our internals and we're right in the midday here, so we would have been, let's see, about 9 o'clock, 9.30 when we saw that. Uh, it's relatively flat. No one's really winning. So we have a range day. No trajectory, no upside, no clear winner as far as that direction goes. The next chart I want to look at is ADD, advancers, decliners. So in the case, same concept, we were looking at total number of green stocks minus total number of red stocks. And the general concept is on the NICE, if you're between negative 500 and 500, you've got yourself a balanced day. 
Uh, if you're above 1500 into the 2000s, you've got a strong day. So on our strong price action day here on the 24th, we open high, we stay high. So we're just solid green. We have solid buying. We know that from our bull volume and we're just staying the course. So as long as we don't deviate from this, we have no reason to doubt the bulls. Now, when we come over here on our week ranging day, we open high, but we drop right back down. We get our five minute oversold conditions and then we sort of move around. So we go from minus 30, minus 378 up to a thousand and the thousand is good, but it's not in strong bull territory. It's still sort of in the no man's land between uh, confirmed balance and a real lack of commitment. So we would need to be up about here plus to have a strong constructive day. Instead, we sort of waffle around. We go back dipping into range and out of range, and we can see that with our ADR. Anything within under two, I consider to be uh, a balanced day, and we really have that. And over here, we're not even on the charts. We're way up here in the, in the fives and sixes, so a significantly stronger day. So we have ADD not really giving us any signs of constructive uh, power. Overall, the market's really in balance, so we're tipping back and forth, and we end up actually having a bit of a drift to the downside. And that's suggestive of market balance. ADD is in balance. Lastly, I want to look at tick real quick. So tick for our, oh boy, I need both of these charts. Where is my cumulative tick? So here we have our cumulative tick for our 24th constructive bull day and for our June 27th the balance day. So cumulative tick is essentially who wins this this uh, tick above zero line. If the, if the bar closes above zero, we build our cumulative tick. If it closes under zero, we take away from whatever that is. So we can see here that the, the bulls are, despite having some dips below the zero line, which is this yellow line here, we overall are closing positive. So our cumulative tick Build. So we always have a little bit of bearish activity. Our price action has to consolidate, uh, even on a small scale. So it's not uncommon. In fact, you almost, I don't think I've ever seen many days without a red candlestick on the tick. But what matters is we have this collective strong build on our solid constructive day. Counter that with our June 27th market internally weak balance day. Here we can see that we have overall uh, a red tick. We are not building at all. We have a move up, we have a move down, we have a move back and forth. We are not constructively building any sort of strength with our tick. And lastly, price action, which we've already covered. So what we do with this information as we are trading throughout our, our trading day is we wanna know what sort of uh, action we can expect from the market. So what I wanna do at this point is uh, cut to our a live stream analysis that was performed on June 27th by myself. It's a midday check-in. We're reviewing what the market is doing, uh, what SPY and QQQ is doing. We take a, a few minutes to talk about price action, the expectations from that price action based on the internal strength of the market via these indicators. So first thing is start with SPY because it's making some moves right now. If we go do the five minute time frame, I think Dan just posted about it too. Yeah, short term rising wedge. Uh, actually looks a little bit better on the cues. So we're looking for a bit of a, well, we are in a balance day, first of all. What we're seeing on the internals is suggestive of balance. And we get these balance days, we get highs that we don't trust. We don't really develop trends. We sort of just move around a little bit. We do the best we can with what we got inside this range. So early on, we saw a five minute equilibrium. We saw our drop and we knew that the drop didn't really have a lot of amplitude behind it because the internals were actually showing us a bit of strength. So when we see a bear drop, well, the internals are saying, hey, we're not really, we're not really that angry at you, bro. Uh, you get a low, okay? We knew that low was coming. We had a 15 minute stair step on quite a few names. Um, and then we broke it over here. Uh, but we were looking for that five minute oversold bounce. And then we got our high, we got a higher low into a bit of EQ, right? So we end up not breaking the low. Why? Because we're not really in a trending day. The internals are telling us that we're in a balanced day. So we tend to get these sort of lows. Sometimes we get lower lows that much follow through. Sometimes we get these higher highs that much follow through. This is really the way to play these days. 
So QQQ, five minute low, lower high, higher low, bit of balance. We end up with quite a few names in equilibrium patterns and stair step patterns. Uh, Netflix is one of those stair step patterns over here. Finally come down, break the high, get a little bit of a bounce. What are we looking for? 15 minute lower highs looking to set up right now. So how does that correlate to our QQQ? Well, we go to our QQQ. We didn't have a stair step pattern. We did have that double bottom. We had the little EQ bull break. We get the higher high, no follow through. And if we go to our five minute time frame, we have a little bit of a wedge to look at. And it's not the prettiest one, but it's here. So I don't know if Dan drew it anywhere, but it's pretty much, it's pretty much like this. You see, it's it's kind of hard to draw the support. What do we have though? We have a converging range. The distance between our highs and our lows here and our highs and our lows here definitely show converging range. Uh, in a bull day that we're looking for a solid 15 minute setup. What are we going to be looking for on a balanced day? Probably some consolidation here, maybe a lower high, maybe a lower low to follow through. Maybe we get a dottle right back up. Ultimately, we've got to range highs right now and arrange lows right now. And we're looking to play inside those as long as the internals continue to give us that semblance of balance. So we just lost our five minute support. We're looking for a 15 minute consolidation over the low of day. And let's remove all of that mess right now. And that's where we're at. So SPY is going to have a pretty similar situation. SPY high a day, a low, lower high, higher low again, move up, great, higher low, great, higher high, two minute time frame, equilibrium, bears break. And uh, we don't really have a wedge as beautiful as we do on our QQQs, but we can all agree that we have a little bit of a tightening range between these. I'm not sure what we're going to call these. It's going to have a better name for those. Um, but it is tightening up. Maybe, so here's one section. Let's try, and, let's try this. Let's go, where's my colors? Come on, Jason, you know how to do this. Brush. Oh, yeah, I got to go, I guess. So here's one section. Maybe. Come on, you can do it. Oh, man. There it is. Hi. Let's go green. Okay, so one section here. Another section here. Another section here. Now what we're going to have to do is break into really small time frames to see how those build out. So we have our downtrend, our downtrend, our downtrend. These groups of action are getting smaller. And actually it looks really nice on the two-minute time frame. But you can see that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until finally we break. So we have that area of converging range. That's what we want to be looking for. So SPY has that area of converging range, that wedge type of play. The highs and lows aren't as well defined as our ranges go, but we can certainly say we have something here. And I guess we have something up here. So now the idea would be because, because if we are in a ranging day, we are looking to come back down and test range lows and sort of do this for the duration of the day until something changes. So how do we know if we are in a ranging day or a strong day or a balanced day? We go to our little friendly internals. Now let's look at SPY first. So here's SPY, here's our balance, here's our possible boring trajectory for our sideways action. Uh, and we ask, how likely are we to keep doing this? Well, if we look at our tick, it's pretty flat. Look at uh, a strong day's tick. Oh, let's try and balance that out. So here is a stronger day's tick. See how it's collectively building above zero? Here we're pretty flat. Oh boy. We have a flat tick so far. So what that means is that no one's really in control. We go over here to our volume. Our volume compared to a strong day, pretty flat. So it's basically a one for one game, it's in balance. And our ADD, you know, we're not at 1500 for the NICE, 1500 plus gives us a ranging or a, a strong constructive day. Right now we're still in no man's land, uh, under around a thousand. And we can see that we are still inside our balanced territory. Our ADD is matching our price. So we watch price, look for those divergences, but overall we are just looking for continuation and balance right now. And that's that. 50 minute consolidation underway. Support on SPY, 388.17 in that range. And we'll just be watching for deviations in the internal structure and any signs of overall weakness. So let's take a look at QQQ again. QQQ broke its five minute support. Range highs, range lows. How are our how are our internals? Volume still flat. Here's our zero line. So it's right at the zero line right now. Our, our ADD is actually a little bit weaker. 
than our uh, NICE is, but it is still very much in balance. So waffling between minus 600 and plus 600, that is pretty much the definition of a balance day. And we go to price, we can see that we have our wedge, we have our bear break, we've lost five and higher lows. Our tick is pretty flat. Compare the, the build on this tick to a strong day, it's just quite low. So this is nine o'clock. By nine o'clock over here, we had considerably more volume. Looking at the dotted horizontal line here, we just correlate that high. We had twice the, the bull tick than we do today. So overall, it's balanced. It is leaning bullish. We see that in the price action. But we are going to be watching for uh, the, the balance to remain. We'll be watching for deviations from it. And we're going to use that information to inform our range-based trades. And we'll be looking to individual big names to try to give us a little bit of a leg up or concept of what is going to be happening next. So to cap out our video on the market internal strength, I just want to show uh, really what happened at the end of the day. So we saw with our SPY, we had our low, our five-minute oversell bounce. Beautiful. Rejection from EMA 12, five-minute higher low. We got that wedge built out. And then what we did was we dawdled around. So what were we expecting? We were expecting range highs to be the limit, and we were expecting range lows to be the limit. And we were really looking for action like this, something in here within that range. And I drew that on the 15 minute time frame over here. Here's our wedge, our drop, we dawdled around. That was the expectation in the video. And that really came into play. We lost lower lows without much follow through. We dipped all the way to 347, almost a new low of day. And then we drifted right back up. So there was periods inside the chat room where I was looking at these lows and saying, look, you know, we got a lower low, but we're not expecting this to have any significance. And my expectation was that we would just gradually drift back up. We saw that on the QQQs. We had our low in the 292.09 right in the area of our lows. And I said, you know, I'm not really looking for a market break. Even if we get a lower low, I'm still expecting a drift back up to 293. And that's what we saw. So hopefully that was a useful overview on detecting, uh, analyzing, and discussing uh, market range days and how to use the, the internals to give us a sense of what price action expectations should be. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to email me. Uh, you can reach me at support at chartguys.com. Those guys will get that email to me and I'll be able to help you out. You can always ask a question in the comments and uh, I encourage you to take a look into market internals.